Good afternoon and welcome to Zon Academy. Today's quick bite is self-branding strategies. Unleash your laboratory's potential. Our speaker is Jill Swafford. She's the owner and operator of Oaks Dental Design. We'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation, so please type in your question at the bottom of your screen for us to view. And thank you again for attending. Here is Jill. Hello, everyone. So we're going to dive right on in. As Fran introduced, we are going to be talking about self-branding strategies today and just how to really unleash your laboratory's potential in a social media world that is just unlimited. So we're going to get started. Um, so a little bit about who I am on this next slide here is I am a dental lab owner, just like many of you guys out there. And I'm always dreaming of the next big thing that we're going to do in the lab. And honestly, for me personally, I'm just always optimistic. Uh, I say always, I'm mostly optimistic. <laughs> um, so anything that we're doing and, and what we're going to be talking about today, a little bit to just kind of give you a backstory of the last really month of my life, I've really gone through um, a summit that we presented and that we had just this wonderful event. And then all of a sudden COVID hit again. And so I want to share that because what we're talking about today is so important. And we're in a time where we're looking at possibly not being able to go back into the offices again and having limited in-person contact with them again. And what we're talking about today is that much more prevalent. We're talking about how to really unleash your potential online, which is so, so important today because once again, we're potentially facing not being able to be in person. So just please understand the importance of what we're going to go through today. And I know me personally, having gone through it and realized how limited I was in person contact, it made me even more aware of where I need to be doing this every day. And that's where we're going to start. So with the next slide, you'll see that it, it says nothing is better than consistency. And when we're dealing with And I, I say that with, with all authenticity because showing up every day is what happens online with the algorithms. And what an algorithm is, is a, is a math problem that dictates to the computer what needs to be seen. It dictates to your phone what gets seen first. So these algorithms have all these different things that go into play, but consistency and somebody that shows up and, and is on there every day and is posting every day, ranks you higher in the algorithms. So it's super, super important that if you commit to doing this, which is really important for your lab's growth during this time, that you commit to doing it every single day. And that's what this next slide says is that, you know, you want to carve out time to do it every single day. The best thing that they've done lately is when you have a business page on Facebook, you can schedule your posts ahead of time. So I can get on there and schedule a week's worth, a month's worth of posts on my Facebook business page all in one day. I can schedule one day that I have blocked off four hours of my time and plan out and already pre-schedule every single post that, that is gonna happen on my Facebook page for the entire month. So I don't have to get caught up in the busyness. I just have to remember to do it again the next month because you're not gonna be in a habit of posting daily. I do see the benefit of doing that after having gone through COVID because I didn't feel like getting up and posting every day. So I've seen my ranking slip on Instagram and on Facebook because I'm not, I wasn't present every single day. And so I can see the benefit of posting ahead of time and scheduling your posts. It's just for me, I'm very into being authentic about who I am, what's happening with me today, what the lab is going through right now and today and currently. And so I personally just post daily um, organically. And what, that, what I mean by that is that I post it every day individually. I don't normally pre-schedule. But if I'm going on vacation or things like that, I do always schedule my post and it makes it so much easier. So again, as I said before, you must show up every single day. <laughs> it's, 
it's just super, super important. Consistency is major in this game. You want to be relevant and just in front of people. And when someone's thinking about switching to a new lab, you want to be the one that comes to mind. Used to, we did this through postcards and mailers and all those things are fine, but oftentimes those never make it to the doctor's desk. By doing this on social media, you are in the doctor's hand. You are on their phone. You are in front of their eyes visually for free. You can do paid ads. You can do all those things. But building a following of organic people that just follow you because they like who you are and they like what you provide for them is that much easier. So as we move to this next slide, you're going to see that there. This is an Instagram where we're looking at this and it's in your settings on your Instagram page, which I strongly encourage you to have as a business owner. This setting is major. So what you're looking at when you look at this setting is your audience and your followers. So what you can see here is I can see where my major cities are. I can see if my followers are mostly male or mostly female. I can also see if I can see their ages um, as well as when they're most active. So this is the couple things that I want you to notice on this slide. I can separate uh, the, the two slides to the far left there, or the two pictures there to the far left. As you, if you look to the lower, there's a circle there as well as an arrow. That circle represents the day of the week. So you can slide through Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Sunday, and you can see if your followers are active on different days of the week at different times. So I went to a seminar years ago that told me I needed to post at nine o'clock at night. Nine o'clock at night was when I should be posting. So I did that for a long time. And then I started finding this statistic and I was like, well, my followers are most active in the middle of the day. They are active at nine o'clock at night, but they're most active in the middle of the day. So when I realized that, I started adding an additional post in the middle of the day. So I post at noon and then I also normally post in the evening around 8.30, 9 o'clock because that's when my audience is most active and I want to reach my audience. So these little insights and analytics and statistics that you can get are all built into your Instagram already. These are key components. I want to build personally, my following is, is stronger female based. I'm a female lab owner. I have Ladies of the Mill, which is a female led um, lab tech organization. We I deal with a lot and have a lot of female clients. I used to work with female doctors. It's just who my genre and my relatability connects really well to. I have tons of female or male doctors also that I love and that are wonderful to work with. But as far as my Instagram following, most of my following are female. What that means to me is when I'm posting, I post more storytelling type things. I post more things that are attractive to the female eye. I use pink. I use, and that's not being feminist. It's just, that's who my following is. And I want the most likes. I want the most shares. I want the most engagement. Whereas if I'm doing things that are more one way or the other, male or female, that's what you're going to post. If you want more of those likes and more of those shares, that's how you get your most engagement. So you've got to know your client. So this here is where you're going to know that. That's where you're going to find who you are targeting. If you want to change your audience, you also know that here as well. If I want to go attract more male doctors or doctors that are older or younger, I use Instagram a lot because I want to attract the middle age generation. They're normally more, their offices are more digitally driven because they're in a better place financially. and the younger doctors sometimes invest all in at the beginning, but oftentimes they don't have the financial investment to go all in digital and I'm looking for digital clients. If I wanted to change that audience, this is how I would know. And this is where I could see the changes in my audience. So if I wanted to attract younger people, I would post younger things that would be more attractive to younger people. If I want an older audience, I would do more 90s and 80s and 70s references and so that's kind of how you change that. So first off, you've got to be consistent and you've got to know your audience. So from there, we'll move forward to being different. 
okay? You've got to stand out and make noise in the crowd because there is a lot in the crowd. <laughs> there are so many people out there, but you have such an opportunity to just stand out by being a little bit different. This slide here, everything that you see on this entire presentation are pictures and slides that I have used on my personal Instagram page. This is one here that I posted on my Instagram during the Stanley Cup Finals, which is hockey, if you don't know. I'm from Tennessee. I'm a National Predator fan. And this post, without the be different, make noise, it wasn't there. That writing wasn't there. But this post I posted during the Stanley Cup Finals, it let people know that I like hockey, that I'm a Predators fan. My model is a gold tooth, which is just symbolic of winning um, with the gold. The puck is there. My lighting is a little bit different. That's just who I am. And so you've got to be different. You've got to find a way to just kind of jump out. And that's not a traditional tooth post, but it's something that caught the eye of a lot of people and it had a lot of engagement. So moving forward, as we're looking at, you know, if you don't have followers, you should look at your content. So if you're posting every day, but you're still not gaining followers. If you're posting every single day, you should be adding followers every single day. You should be receiving notifications that more people are liking you or more people are following you or more people have liked your business page. If that's not happening, you should look at your content. You need to take a look at what you're posting and see what you're offering people. So content, you'll hear this a lot in social media, but content is king. That's the, the line that you hear all the time, or content is key. Those two words you'll hear interchanged a lot, but content has got to be relevant. It's got to catch your eye as fast as you're scrolling. It's got to make me stop and look at it. Content goes everything from your picture, from the words on your picture, from the colors of your picture, to the description below. Are you using emojis? Does it catch your eye enough to read it? Do you have caps caps letters on? Do you what does your punctuation look like? And I know it all sounds like it's so complicated, but it's it's really not. It just has to be eye catching. So if you have this, you know, long post that has no no check marks or emojis or stars or it's it's kind of lengthy and it feels long, but if you break it up with these little emojis that might tell you, "Oh, this is a a bomb right here this is a three check mark so oh this is a really quick thing i can read that's got three three points to it that's where, I, where we, when we talk about content that's where we're talking about the importance of it because it's got to make you stop with the scroll if you don't stop through the scroll you're just another picture and you're not standing out you're not making noise so in this next slide here you'll see that it's talking about having your own style I'm more of a believer when it comes to this space in being your authentic self and having your own personal style. So my pictures are typically of the products in the lab. I do use some in the mouth and those kind of things, but this is just kind of who I am. And I love a vignette, which is the black ring around a picture. I love how it brings your eye to the center focus. Um, I definitely play with my contrast a lot because I like for you to see detail in my pictures. And so I like to play with that, especially when I'm using stuff in green state. I love to show the contrast in green state because it just shows how much time we spend individualizing the crowns before they're ever fired. So my style is very vignette, which is the black ring around it again to kind of focus your center. It is um, very product focused as far as what we deliver. You'll notice that I have words on there often. It's something to make them stop and look. Okay, so I really like attractive photographs that are just different. That's my personal style. If you love in the mouth photos and that's your favorite thing to see, then that's what you should be using. And that's very attractive to many people. I like to attract an artistic eye, which is more this direction because that's the kind of doctors that I like to work with they know what work, work looks like in the mouth they can visualize that and I do post it sometimes but me personally this is the doctor that I'm trying to attract so the next thing that we're going to talk about is hashtag trends and how important your hashtags are they're major 
So on Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags. When you post on Instagram, you can also make it set up where it automatically posts to Facebook. So that's why I use Instagram most often is because it will automatically post to my Facebook page and I don't have to do double duty. There's also TikTok. There's all these other sites that you can be on. These are just my two personal favorites. But with hashtags, hashtags trend. And what that means is, let's say the Olympics are going on. Okay, let's say that it's Christmas time. We have so many holidays coming up that this is a great opportunity to really take hashtags and play with them and really dive into the importance of them. Because we have so many special days coming up. We have, you know, Halloween, we have um, Labor Day, we have Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, like we have New Year's, we have all this stuff coming up. And so you have all these opportunities where the entire world is going to be posting the same hashtag. Happy New Year's or um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Those hashtags are going to be used very, very often. And going back to when we talked about algorithms, the algorithm looks for hashtags that are, are popular at the moment. Hashtags change all the time. Christmas never changes. Halloween never changes. Um, those things are staples. They're, they're, they're holidays that are recognizable all around the world. And so when you use that hashtag, it automatically bumps up your engagement. However, what I would not recommend you doing because it's irritating. And honestly, I don't ever want to appear as irritating to my clients. Don't post a, a picture of, you know, three front teeth or three interiors or a posterior molar and then just randomly put happy new year don't do that that's not a hashtag that goes with that post it's just irritating you can tell that you're just marketing you're just throwing stuff out there and, and trying to to ride the coattails don't do that post that picture beside one of if you're doing happy new year beside one of those happy new year hats and say, you know, if you're looking for a new lab for the new year, we're, we're who you're looking for. Post Happy New Year, wishing you best prosperity for the, the year, year to come with the Happy New Year hat and your tooth beside it. Something like that. Don't just use the hashtags just to use them, okay? People see through that stuff and it's just irritating and people will unfollow you from stuff like that. They don't want to feel marketed to. They're happy to be engaged with and to feel like they're getting value from. They're happy with those things and they want to follow you and they want to like you and they want to share. They don't want to be sold snake oil. And posting about Merry Christmas while you have nothing Christmas in your photo is just irritating. So don't do that. So in the next slide, you'll see like I did a 12 days of Christmas. So on this 12 days of Christmas slide here, um, you can see that we were very consistent in our branding. I use Canva a lot. And so we use this consistent template for our 12 days of Christmas. Every day was a different tech tip that could be used in the office that was given from a lab tech at the bench. So it just created value for them. I also had my random Merry Christmas that got thrown in there also. That's just that one little way to break it up and just just not look so repetitive but for the algorithms this was a great way to just build and pro and post every single day so as we go through the next and we're talking about gaining a loyal audience this is the key word is loyal to gain a loyal audience you need to give them value you need to be worth their time you need to be worth their scroll you need to be worth their follow so there's lots of ways to do that and one way is to post videos um, I don't think I can play this video because of the technical difficulties, but this video is a simple nine second long video that just says dental bridges are like bridges over water. And so as you see there with the model, the 3D printed model, which also lets them know I'm digital, I drop the bridge on there and the bridge goes over water. It's really simple, nine seconds long. It's not something that they have to sit there and watch for five minutes. Very, so it's something they can show their patients, they can share on their own Facebook pages, those type things. So I, I gave them value because it's something they can share on their end. It's something they can use to educate their patient on. So lastly, what we wanna talk about after we've talked about being different and being consistent is you wanna just kinda of create your social media buzz. 
So you want to, to figure out how to get people excited about you, right? So as you can see here, this was a few posts that I just pulled from, from my likes before. And these were, you can see exactly how many people were reached in these posts. Um, the first one is just a really awesome, simple, beautiful picture taken with my cell phone of an implant with a gold crown above, or with a gold above it. Super simple. It reached like 6,500 people. That's not a lot to a lot of people, but for a one-man lab, two-man lab, I'm thrilled with that. A super simple post. The next one is just of a wax up. Again, it's showing them that I'm digital. And lastly, there's a video. Okay, and all these are able to be found. But so as we go forward, one of the best ways to create buzz about yourself is letting them into your life. Not everything that I do is a picture of a tooth. I want them to get to know who I am as a person. I personally am somebody that's very um, close to my faith. I'm very open about my faith. And so this was a post that I sent out. This was a case that I was sending out that I post or that I wrote on a Bible verse. It also has my meal in the background. So again, there's that little piece of dentistry and then that little piece of who I am. I had also posted where I had been speaking at a dent supply event. And this was one of the big pictures that they had. And I was like, how cool is this? I'm standing beside myself. Like, that's really neat. So you bring them into your life. It shouldn't always just be about dentistry. And then following up with just, as I said before, I'm really big on being yourself, showing them who you are. I'm not about trying to pretend like I'm somebody else or trying to mimic exactly how somebody else does their social media posting. I don't want to look like a brand that I'm not. So being your authentic self is so, so important. Um, so as we move forward, that's one of the big things that I feel like you should take away is never try to be another lab. So being who you are and showing people who you are is the fastest way to grow. People don't want to get to know people that aren't real. They don't want to get to know an Instagram person. They want to get to know the person, right? So we all feel like that we have, and that we struggle so often with just getting to know the real person or just getting to know the person behind the camera, you know, so being your authentic self and letting people in and even on your struggle days, that is the fastest way to grow on online. So don't forget that. So often we're so worried about comparing ourselves to somebody else, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's not necessary. Um, people can feel that you're not being real. They can feel that it feels pressed or fake or it feels like that person's working against the grain because you can just tell they're not comfortable. So as soon as you let go of all of our, our honestly, our insecurities and our fears of being like someone else, you can begin to be yourself. And that's the best thing that you can do on social media. Lastly, I would say tag your vendors. And this one is major. Uh, this is a really quick way to grow your audience. So as you can see here, this is, if I'm doing something like today, I tagged at Zon Dental Lab. It's a super easy, quick, little two-second thing that you can do that, who knows, Zon may decide to share my post. Guess what? When they share their post, my little bitty two-man lab, three-man lab, it gets shared with people all over the world. Just because I tag them, especially if it's a really cool photo of a product of theirs, if it's a, a really cool midway through the process, you got great lighting on a brush that you use or on the, the composite that you're, you're putting on your PMMA just looks amazing. Tag your vendor in it. Number one, it's just a great way to say, hey, you provide me with an awesome product or an awesome service, and I just want to let everybody know that you guys are great to me. So first off, do it out of just the kindness of your heart to say, thanks for being awesome to me. Yes, I buy your products, but I love them in my hand every day, and I appreciate them, and I, I'm so thankful that you spend the time that you do to pr provide great quality products. Secondly, it's just a great way to reach more of an audience. So as we're recapping here and finishing up, because I know we got started a little late, so I'm trying to still honor your time. Just remember that consistency is key. It's better to post every day even 
than just having the best content. Be consistent, work on your content and let it get better as you go. You'll find what people like and what, what your followers are into and you post more of those things. But consistency in the beginning is way more important. So you can focus on your content as you learn, but just make sure you show up every day. Don't forget to be different and give and do what others are not. So if you see that there's a missing part in the market, like those little videos of just bridges or a video of how you submit an implant to an abutment or little things like that, find things that are missing in the market and be that. It's a wonderful way to grow that following. And lastly, just create your social media buzz by showing them you. Don't try to be somebody else, just show them you. So thank you for your time today. Again, I want to make sure that I'm honoring your time and I just really appreciate Zon for giving me the opportunity to do this. It means a lot and I'm super passionate about just seeing other people grow. Um, if you want to reach out to me, please feel free to do that. You can follow us on all the places. Just look for Oaks Dental Designs um, as well as Jill Swafford. So I'm happy to help and answer any questions that you have in the future or today. And again, I look forward to our next one. Thank you so much. Hey, Jill. Everybody here at Zon wants to thank you very much for this very informative piece of information for our attendees. It was great, and I'm sure you're going to be helping an awful lot of people with their businesses with this. Social media is so important, um, and we're just thankful that you were so honest and, and you gave them a lot of good tips. So thank you from all of us here. We do have yep. one question so far, and the first question is, Exactly how did you get your name out there for social media? Did you start telling your customers that you do have an Instagram and to follow you on Instagram or just by using hashtags? Yeah, so I originally just started my Instagram page and it was just people that I knew that started following me just naturally. Um, as people see that there's oh, there's Jill Swafford, or oh, there's Oaks Dental Designs. I know who that person is. So they would just be people that I knew, not necessarily dental in the beginning. When that happened and they started liking posts and showing interest and engagement, between that engagement, which helps the algorithms and the hashtags that I had to learn, you know, hashtag dental, hashtag DDS, hashtag, you know, dental lab, those things that I started using, that's how I built my following. So I didn't necessarily send out to my clients as much as just, like I said before, post every single day and you'll naturally watch that, that change and grow. Great. Thank you for that answer. Is there any other questions out there for Jill? I'm an open book. I promise. <laughs> we do want to let everybody know that we are open um, to any topic. So if there are, if there's something that you really want to learn about, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email and just let us know. We'd be happy to research the topic for you. Um, please stay tuned for our other quick bites and some more info from Jill and the rest of our speakers out there. We just wanna wish everybody a very happy day. And we do have a lot of thank yous to Jill for their presentation. So that's, that's wonderful too. So thank you everybody for attending and we hope you have a great day from Zon Academy.